Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. I am Dr. Chitra, one of the mentors at Study EFOG and I am here to tell you a few important points about secondary amenorrhea. Amenorrhea means absence of menses. Now secondary amenorrhea means a woman has been having a menses previously and then afterwards she has had amenorrhea. So any woman who has been having her cycles regularly when she reports absence of menses for a period of three months, it is called a secondary amenorrhea. Whereas in a woman who has had irregular cycles, if she reports absence of periods for a period of six months or six cycles, then it is called as secondary amenorrhea. The causes of secondary amenorrhea can be divided into central causes, that is hypothalamic or pituitary causes, or endocrine causes like uh, thyroid causes, adrenal causes, ovarian, or causes in the uterus. Now how will you come to a differential diagnosis and what is the management of those women with secondary amenorrhea? So a thorough a physical examination and a history taking is important. Now whenever uh, you have a history which tells you something about the central nervous system like there is headache or blurring of vision, any evidence of head injury or any woman who reports uh, extreme weight loss or she gives a history of severe exercise all these usually point towards a hypothalamic cause now in the hypothalamus uh, how do you come to a diagnosis well from the history and also levels of fsh and lh would help you to come to a diagnosis as to whether it is hypogonadotrophic hypergon hypo uh, amenorrhea or it is hypergonadotrophic whenever levels of fsh and lh are less it is a hypogonadotrophic amenorrhea usually pointing towards the hypothalamus. These women usually uh, uh, show good response uh, either to replacement with FSH and LH or if there is a history of extreme weight loss then uh, with dietic uh, advice bringing the EM BMI to the normal level or reducing the amount of exercise it usually helps these women. In the pituitary, the most common causes are adenomas. These usually cause hyperprolactinemia and they respond well to dopamine agonist agents like cabergolin. If the woman does not respond to cabergolin, then surgical treatment is indicated. Thyroid problems usually do not lead to a significant ovarian dysfunction, but hypothyroidism can at times lead to anovulation or irregular menses and uh, replacement with thyroid hormones usually helps these women. In adrenal disorders, congenital adrenal hyperplasia can present either with irregular menstruation or sometimes with amenorrhea. In the ovaries, uh, premature ovarian failure, that is women, those who have had periods previously and then they are presenting with amenorrhea before 30 years of life, for these women, it is essential to do a karyotype. If the karyotype is normal uh, or it is 46XX or if it is 45XO, then for these women, uh, hormone replacement therapy is essential uh, to protect the cardiac system and also to prevent osteoporosis. In case you find somebody with an abnormal karyotype that is 46XY, uh, it is always better to advise a gonadectomy in order to prevent sinister changes in the gonads. Now, uh, coming uh, to the other cause in the ovaries, the commonest cause is PCOS. So, whenever you find any woman who complains of weight gain, hirsutism, and then irregular menstruation or absence of menstruation, it is very uh, important to rule out PCOS and symptomatic treatment or if she is desiring a pregnancy, ovulation induction usually helps her. Coming to the uterus and the ovaries, the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea in any woman in the reproductive age group is pregnancy. So whenever any woman presents with, uh, with uh, secondary amenorrhea in the reproductive age group, do not forget to offer a beta HCG level. The other cause in the ovary could be Asherman's syndrome. So any woman who reports uh, a history of undergoing any surgical procedure on the uterus in the form of uh, DNC either diagnostic or for termination of pregnancy it is always better to offer a hysteroscopy and uh, rule out Asherman's syndrome. So these were a few important points about 
secondary amenorrhea coming to the management whenever a woman who is less than 30 years of age and she presents with secondary amenorrhea it is important to replace the hormones so a common approach is either to give oral contraceptive pills or you could be giving estrogens for 25 days and in the later phase that is 16 to 25 day of the cycle it is advisable to give progesterone to protect the endometrium from unopposed action of the estrogen uh, it is important to pay attention to what the patient wants. So, if she is desirous of a pregnancy, ovulation induction is offered. Uh, if she is very symptomatic, in the like she is presenting with menopausal symptoms, that is, then it is important uh, to replace hormones in order to give her a good quality of life. So, this was in short about the diagnosis and management of secondary amenorrhea. I hope you have found the video helpful. Thank you.